Well, I, uh, I work at Create VR. So um, right off the bat, you know, a lot of my needs are going to be very different from a lot of the uh, visual effects industry. And so what you'll see probably from a lot of my colleagues tonight is how Mari is used for these really, really beautiful, intricate textures and you know, using UDIMs to get really high detail. And when you have a close-up of somebody's eye and not sacrifice detail in another place, um, I'm the guy that gets that and rips it all apart and gets rid of all of that and pretty much takes it down to its bare minimum. Um, so what we're gonna show you is uh, how we used Mari in the VR experience we made for Spider-Man Homecoming last year. Um, so we took feature VFX models from um, the actual team that you know, was rendering all of the final images and our task was essentially to make them run in real time. So I'm gonna show you how we use Mari to do that. Um, we work typically on VR experiences for movies. Um, you can see we do a lot of work for, for Sony. We've done Spider-Man. Our first one was for The Walk, um, which is a Robert Zemeckis film with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And we took um, pretty much Manhattan from 1974, again, converted it into real time from visual effects assets. Um, the same with uh, Ghostbusters, we did a few for. So, um, for Spider-Man, the task was, like I said, we, we got these really, really detailed, beautiful characters, and we had to actually make them run in real time. Um, especially for VR and multi-platform, it has to be really flexible, it has to be um, no custom solutions that can't run on just any normal PC or even PlayStation 4. Um, the, the key emotional story point that we really needed it for was at the beginning of the experience, um, this briefcase opens and just like in the movie, um, you know, Tony Stark has made this high-tech spider suit and um, you have a moment where you reach out, grab the mask, you can look at it up close, hold it, it's all dynamic. You put it on, your hands become Spider-Man's hands, a mirror comes up and you can actually look at yourself as Spider-Man full body. So we wanted to make sure that really looked as good as possible so that users felt, you know, as close as you could be to being Spider-Man. Oops. Um, so this is a, a screenshot essentially of, of that moment where it's about three feet in front of your face. You know, what you gotta remember too with VR compared to a lot of um, other interactive or passive media, you know, I can say, all right, this table is always gonna be about three feet away from me, so I only need this many pixels here. But if I give the person some uh, translation freedom, the person, they can really look down to like the finest detail and see um, the thread count. So texture detail uh, becomes really critical, especially on your hero objects. So when we first got the Spider-Man model, um, this is what we got. You know, we took it into Mari. Um, you can see we have about uh, 70 UDIM texture tiles. Um, each one of them is 8K. Um, Spider-Man himself is about 330,000 polys. Um, we have 12 channels, you know, between the diffuse and the spec and roughness and masks and all that. So, um, you know, we have, <laughs> we have about four to work with um, in the end. And um, you can see this is how Vulture looked. He was, I think, 3.3, 3.2 million polys. Um, and he had two objects, each with 72 texture tiles, uh, 12 passes. We did the math and um, at 8K, it's about 4.8 gigapixels of texture data. Um, he was about 80 gigs, I believe, and Spider-Man was about 30. Um, keep in mind, you know, like a PlayStation 4 has about six gigs of RAM to work with total for the entire game. Um, so when we see these, you know, we, we have to look back and say, okay, what is important from um, all of these texture sets? How do we get them into real time? The first problem is that UDIM textures are not supported natively in real time. Um, and that is a huge bummer because uh, it is not an easy process to uh, transfer them. And, and that's what this entire presentation is about. The old way that we used to do it um, is, it used to take about three to four weeks per character. Um, really tedious, really just hand uh, piece by piece. I'll go over that in a minute. Um, you know, UDIMs are also, uh, they allow some freedom on 
You know, I want to have a shot where I go close up to this one piece of, of whatever. Um, and that's great for, for linear media and VFX, but, you know, in real time, we have to worry about texel density, which essentially means, you know, how many pixels or how many, uh, how big is, is your, are your UVs compared to real world units? Uh, I think we ended up about um, one texel per meter, give or take, um, so that you don't have wasted resolution. Um, or, or anything like that. So when you can see with uh, these UDIMs, you'll see that there's a lot of detail on the upper right on the little shards of his eye for the little um, articulating pieces. But then his hands are in the bottom there. And so in VR, you know, your hands are right here. This is where you actually need most of the resolution. Um, so we really need to prioritize um, what gets the resolution and what doesn't. Um, like I said, the, the textures are just gigantic files. Not only are they um, many, many passes and high res, they are also HDR, EXRs. Um, the models themselves are, you know, Spider-Man was 300 some thousand, Vulture was 3 million. Uh, they have hundreds of individual moving parts, especially Vulture, and, you know, with VR performance, um, every new object in the scene is a big performance hit, and it's doubly so if it's part of a skeletal mesh. Um, so we also get sort of just a large dump of assets and some light instructions and it pretty much says like, okay, well, you know, these are what you need, go have fun, because a lot of the visual effects studios, you know, they'll have their own custom workflow and their own custom shaders and materials and we can't access those. Um, and even if we could, it wouldn't matter because uh, we have to still get it into a standard, um, in this case, Unreal Engine shader format. So a lot of it on our part is sort of guesswork of like, oh, well, I think they used this pass and masked it over this part of the body and, you know, amped it up this way or whatever it might be. So there's a lot of patchwork and, and kind of guessing going on. Um, and we're also just part of a film. I and mean, you know, there's the whole creative process to filmmaking that is going on um, that we are sort of along the ride for. So if the director chooses to say like the, the, the blue shade of Spider-Man needs to change in this kind of lighting scenario or um, yeah, the, the weapon effect for this, you know, needs to completely change we have to really rapidly um, match that because we're working at the very tail end of, of this pipeline. And I'm not gonna go too deep into the performance, but I wanna give you guys just a sense of what it is like to not only go to real time, because I come from an offline rendering background with motion graphics and visual effects. So I've been working in real time for about two or three years now, and the biggest shock to me is just the performance needs of VR. So, you know, if you're gonna render even a, a 2D flat game, say it's HD, you can get away with rendering about 70%, uh, and you know, most of the time you can't tell the difference, it'll just scale up. Um, 30 frames a second is fine, you know, obviously people want 60, but nobody's gonna really like frown at 30. So you can do that, you can put in tons of post-processing, you know, the beautiful motion blur, all these next-gen effects that people are used to. Um, and you push about, you know, let's say 43 and a half million pixels a second. Um, when you take that to VR, we cannot render lower and scale up, we have to do the opposite. We actually have to super sample. So typically we start rendering at 140% resolution. And for a Vive or a Rift, you know, 2160 by 1200 is already a pretty high res screen. So when you do that, you super sample and you render at 90 frames a second, always. You can never drop below that, otherwise you can easily just make somebody sick. Um, that's, you know, potentially up to eight times as many pixels, just how many pixels you render out. So the throughput is hugely demanding, and it is just every pixel, every kilobyte of memory counts. And not only that, you know, the post-processing is pretty useless in VR for the most part. Um, you know, I remember I turned on Bloom uh, just to see if we could get some nice highlights, and my frame rate dropped by 15, and that was just obviously unacceptable. So we have a lot of restrictions to work with. Um, so with the UDIM textures, um, what we've done before is we would bring in the mesh into Maya and we would look at all the UDIM shells and we would select them in the UV editor, convert that to faces, extract the mesh, move it over to our, poly, our low poly mesh, bake that one little piece on, usually worked, but 
you know, certain baking techniques are just kind of worthless, but you do one by one after moving all of the UV shells manually. It was a huge, huge pain. It took, like I said, about three or four weeks. Just not a sustainable workflow. It did look good in the end, but it was just a slog. So when we started Spider-Man, we really knew that there's gotta be a better way to do this, and so we looked into Mari, and what we found is the texture transfer tool um, was everything for us. So that really simplified the process and just made my artists really happy, and it actually allowed them to be um, artists and not just technicians on this. Um, so for one, it was really easy for us to bring in all of the individual passes and view them on the model and switch between them really quickly because if I'm just looking in bridge at 70 EXRs, you know, I have to wait 10 or 15 minutes just for it to build previews and it's usually just looking at a little mess of just gray and white shades and it doesn't really mean anything. Um, so this way we could at least bring it in and look at it on the meshes and say like, okay, well that kind of looks like you know, we could use that for a roughness map or a whatever kind of map. Uh, what else? So it, it also helped us translate because we could um, set up a Unreal um, PBR-based uh, shader directly within Mari. So it wasn't sort of this entity that was going to get, you know, packaged at the end. It was something that we could work towards right away. Um, and as well as uh, texture or transferring the, the high poly detail to the low poly mesh. It was sort of a nice, you know, one size fits all solution. So, um, this is our, you know, base Spider Man UDIM UV set. Um, and then our artist took it and converted that into a three zero to one or three zero to one uh, texture maps. So, you can see too now how we have a lot more detail on the web shooter and on the hands, um, very little on you know, the, like the, this part of the body, which you'll really never see. And these are our channels, so just, you know, obviously there's a diffuse channel, but then these other ones, which are never really named correctly for us, but we could kind of start to make sense of them. They're all like kind of the same, but a little different, so it was really nice to be able to just switch through it, look really easily. So as we took our UDIM tiles, our channel transfer here, um, this is where all the magic happened. And you know, it, it took us a, a little bit of doing to figure out which settings um, in the tra uh, channel transfer work for us. So especially like the search um, being radial or bidirectional, um, I think that really matters per mesh. And some solutions worked well for us uh, better than others on certain meshes. So, but you can see how this takes um, are very, very, very small, well, actually very, very large, but small in that image, uh, textures and transfers it really, really beautifully onto our zero to one UVs. Um, and then we take that right now into uh, Substance Painter. Uh, we're probably going to move this workflow as well into Mari, but uh, as this was our first kind of rodeo with Mari. Um, our artists wanted to still get it into Substance because they were a little more comfortable with the translation between its materials and uh, Unreal's materials. And we essentially combined all of the Mari outputs here um, into a more, you know, game, real-time friendly kind of thing. So like this normal map, you know, we didn't even get a normal map. So that normal map is the combination of a height map, a, a diffuse map, um, the high-res geo, um, all baked down under the low res. Uh, and then, this thing, there we go. So these are the results. So you can see on the left, that is the feature model of Spider-Man, that is the 330,000 polys, 30 gigs of texture, UDEM. On the right, that is our real-time model, it's about 16,500 polys, and three 4K textures. We just have a diffuse, a normal map, and an arm, so a ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic. So you can see him in a nice little pose here and even in action. So we're pretty pleased with how he came out. So for Vulture, uh, we took him down from 3.2 million polys into 28,000, and that was a slog, let me tell you. Um, but we're also really pleased with uh, his results here too. So you can see all these different articulated parts on his wings. Um, 
he'll probably shout a little bit, but you can see them move and all the little, the details really come through. There you go. So these are really cool to animate as well. And you can see sort of a before, or a, comparing the feature shot to our real-time model, uh, you know, we're pretty pleased with that. Uh, so uh, for the future, what we're looking at as well is how we can actually export UDIM tiles directly from Mari um, into Unreal. And there is a, a plugin that we're looking at that is a nice bridge between the two called Granite. And essentially it's a, I'm gonna simplify it, but it's, it's, a, it's a really, really high tech, just tiling and level of detail compiler that you can get up to a 256K texture running in real time. And literally like right before this presentation, my artist is texting me tests. He's got Spider-Man in there working with it and he said you can go all the way up to his hand and you can see the individual fibers and it's running in real time um, in VR. And so not only will we get this crazy detail, it's going to still even simplify the process of um, having to re-UV everything. And then we can actually use Mari for what it was intended to and really um, do a lot of our creative work in there and not worry so much about the translation work. So um, that's it. So if you haven't played the experience, it's available on uh, PlayStation VR, uh, Oculus Rift, and Vive. Um, it's for free. It's a nice about 15 minute experience. And um, the movie is also available on video. If you haven't seen it, it's really fun. So that's it for me. Thank you.